My name is Sheldon Yellen. I'm the CEO of Belfour. No. And Jen, no, come you're on. You're getting your raise. Thank you. Oh my God. I'm Tina Chu, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Mandarin Restaurants, and I was Jen. <laughs> Sheldon Yellen, CEO of Belfour Holding, a post-disaster relief and reconstruction service, was lacking the link with his 6,400 employees. He decided to go incognito to see how his people were doing with their work. The 53-year-old had a hunch that there were a lot of things he was being left out of. I just hope I can keep up with the guys. Hi, I'm here to see Joe. Is Come on in. Okay, thank you. Hopefully the damage isn't too severe. And only time will tell if his disguise will do any good or sell him out. Well, let's see if his first employee, Joe, one of his restoration technicians, can see through the disguise of Tom Kelly. Well, the guy straight up set Kelly here with his first task, which was too much work for his old bones. The CEO was totally out of his element. He was slow at his job, dropping his helmet and doing all sorts of unimpressive stuff. But Joe was too stern to be shaken by any minor inconvenience, and he ended up giving life lessons to his own CEO, which you don't get to do every day, now do ya? So how much work is there here, though? What if there's not a leak tomorrow? Then I'll, I'll hustle. So you run more than one job at a time? Oh, yeah. It would affect, potentially, the response time that they would have in the event of an emergency. Don't let it get the best of you. Boom, doggies. Okay. If you think that the previous embarrassment was too much, then you are wrong, as the big guy's about to make a fool of himself in front of a young guy and test his patience beyond the pale. No, we're not exaggerating at all. Look, he was shifted from ripping apart to putting back, and his companion drew a young carpenter. P.S. The boss was no help at all. He could barely put a nail through. Even Yellen knew how worthless assistance he was, and this shook his confidence like never before. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> you know what, Tom? I think we're at a good stopping point. I'm not used to failing, and I really didn't like this experience today at all. I'm probably just not as good as I've been told by everybody else in my business life. But he was not the ordinary guy to break that easily, so he dusted himself off and got his next master hand, Brenda, the cleaning Jedi. And oh man, was she good at her job! The woman connected with everyone around her instantly. And while Kelly was impressed by her skill, he couldn't help but fail to show his. The poor person, they care about each other. So I was homeless for a little bit, and I lived in a boxcar from a train. Imagine that. How long you live in a boxcar? Baby, until I was like seven. My grandma boiled water, and we'd take a bath in one of them big old black kittles. I've been blessed in my life financially to be where I'm at. Hey, Sheldon Yellen is a real softy, isn't he? The guy made me cry too for a second. But guess what? This is not even the best part. What happened next made us fans of the guy. Well, without giving away much, it's time to get to the last best employee, Jen, the water constructor for the company. She was top notch when it came to her job. She had Kelly tag along and taught him well. Her bosses knew it and she was promoted 10 months ago. However, the bummer was that she didn't get her raise. This revelation pushed the CEO to the edge and made him go like this. My name is Sheldon Yellen. I'm the CEO of Belfour. No, and Jen, no, come you're on. You're getting your raise. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Time for the big fish to get back to his pond and get the gang in and show the whole company the hustle their own CEO pulled off on them. I'm Sheldon Yellen, the CEO of Belfour. Really? Oh my God. Drew, you aggravated me so much. I was so mad. Joe, I know you've been with us a short while, but I see the talent in you. Brendan, I was so impressed with your spirit. Thank you. Jen, we are a better company because of you. <laughs> the largest provider of plumbing and drain cleaning services in North America named Roto-Rooter. Rick was featured on The Undercover Boss in season one. Yeah, we're going all the way back for this one. The CEO of the company, Rick Garkia, joined the show and set aside his tailored suits and pristine home for a blowtorch and raw sewage to discover how the real effort is put in by his employees to make sure that his company runs. But things are easier said than done. I'm about five minutes away from you. Don't tell anybody what you're doing, but can you can you come pick me up? I'll, I'll explain it all later. I'm at the motel. Uh -oh. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Good to Good. see you. All right, let's get going. All right. All right, man. Let's go. Let's do it. So the guy was set for going in as a general technician to do the bread and butter stuff that rotors have been doing since 1935. So at first, he met Daryl, who took him along his daily routine. 
in which Arkea had to throw holes and pull some disgusting stuff. But hey, it's all part of the job, you see? That is how corporations get their big money. Nonetheless, what had us down was his companion's life story. Uh, I started getting pains in the chest. They found a 95% blockage. Now, now the procedures were done by 20 minutes. Yeah. But recovery was four months. Do you feel much better now? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back to 100 now. Up next, he was placed at the customer care desk. The irony was that according to him, it was the lighted job in his company. But when he stepped in Candace's shoes, he constantly messed up by taking over the customers and giving wrong instructions. Things got so bad that the woman had to stop him and take over as he was ruining their customers, which he didn't like at all. Nonetheless, when he got to know his employees, he realized that he was the one lacking warmth and fuzziness. I came into the dispatch job believing that all I've got to do is turn it on, here we go. I got to bring in some of that customer service mentality. I got to, I got to be a little warmer and fuzzier. Arkea was then shifted to sewer maintenance, and oh boy, was it too much for him. The guy was a total shame, as he could not even pull the hose on a water pipe. Still, his mentor of the day, Chris, was very patient with him. The guy took him under his wing and even told him about his trouble with addiction, which hit quite hard for both of them, as Arkea's father was also an addict, but didn't step up to be like his own employee who made up for his past mistakes. I've been in recovery for six and a half years. I had a drinking and drug problem. Drinking. I actually had to go through re rehab. Six and a half years later, I'm standing right here in front of you. I suspect, though, <clears throat> you're a lucky guy. Very lucky. Not all superheroes wear capes, as there's one who's there for the less privileged. Meet Henry, who's got a golden heart. And he's about to teach Arkea the biggest lesson of his life. After going to a distressed elderly woman's house and crawling to uncomfortable places, when the time came to get paid for their hard work, the customer did not have enough money. So our guy Henry gave a discount from his own pocket and left the CEO baffled. At first I was taken aback by Henry's giving such an extreme discount, but I thought about it and I realized Henry works on commission, so he was taking money out of his own pocket. We'll see you tomorrow, okay? Okay, okay ma'am. Time to get back and change things for good. Gosh, I'm excited about how all these people will react when the truth actually gets revealed. I'm not Hank. Rick Arquilla, President and Chief Operating Officer of Rotor Rooter. Daryl, <laughs> uh. you're a very valuable employee to Rotor Rooter. Candace, one of the things that really bothers me is that you're a single mom who works really hard every night. Henry, you truly are a special person. Thanks. Chris, I want you to know that it's a real honor having met you. All you can enjoy Mandarin had the honor of being featured on Undercover Boss Canada. While our employees believed they were being filmed for a documentary on industry training, James Chu is running one of the biggest chains in China, a family-run empire. But the tricky part is that in this cutthroat line of work, pointing out inaccuracies can be hard. So he's looking forward to sending his own daughter to check on what part they're lacking the services on. So will things take a turn for better or worse? Only time will tell. So with their 7 million customers in mind, the CEO of the company, Tina, changed herself into Jenny Lee. Let's see how this working mother does at her new job. Hi, everyone. Oh my God. That by going undercover in this disguise, I can really learn something new, not as COO or as a member of the Chu family. Her accomplice was Peter, a server who would train her to attend to diners before, during, and after their meals by helping them place, receive, and pay for their orders. They also ensure the timely delivery of food and beverages by checking on their tables periodically throughout the service time. Clearly, it was not an easy job, and Tina messed up at every set. Luckily, her boss for the day was too patient with him. He even had a heart-to-heart -heart moment with Tina. So tell me again, how long have you been working here for? I have been working here for about five years. Well, my dad took sick with a neurodegenerative disease like 17 years ago. So I kind of really help out whenever I can. He's really had to work hard to provide some support for his family. So my heart really goes out to him. Excellent customer service skills and positive attitude. Organizational skills sum up a good host, and they can act as a game changer in the hotel business. So you need the best of the best to take this part. Let's see if she'll hit the mark with help of her next employee, Tara. When the customers come in, we say, hello, welcome to Mandarin. Hello, welcome to Mandarin. Mandarin. Hello, welcome to Mandarin. Mm. Welcome. 
Hello, welcome to Mandarin. Welcome to Mandarin. Hello, nice. Oh, looks like that meet and greet is much harder than the CEO had anticipated so far because she washed out pretty badly and the boss lady could barely get her voice out and connecting with the customer seemed like a pipe dream. All of this made her wonder how Tara, being so young, had cracked the code. And that led to Tina finding out about the hostess's backstory. Why did you have to move so much? It's kind of a tragedy. But my mom died when I was 13, and oh. I didn't have anybody else to raise me. So my mom's family was like, we'll oh. take care of you. I'm sorry to hear that. Where, did, where was your dad? He left when I was 10, so it didn't really work out that well. Time to turn some heat on, as now the CEO will hit the kitchen, and her mentor there was Stone. We all know that food is the heart of any restaurant. You just can't mess it up. P.S. Chu had no chief, so she was quite a pain for her guide, as Tina was very slow and totally burned her food, which ended up in the trash can. This was a good thing, though. No bad food should make it to the table. But her real concern was the lack of air conditioning, as the kitchen staff was working at almost 100 degrees. In a way, we can say that this humiliating encounter did good for the CEO of Mandarin. But Tina was not leaving that easily, because she had to have a crack with her working chief. <laughs> just kidding. They both had a very good hit chat after they got done with their shift. What do they think about your job? I don't know. It's hard to say, because uh, they want me to start uh, with my engineering, with my education, because it sounds better. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I love to cook. You want to be a chef? Or... I want to be a chef. I guess now we should cut to the part where these guys learn they were really part of a show. Hopefully, Jenny did more good than the CEO had planned. Do you want to see their reaction? Because, well, I do. I'm Tina Chu, the Chief Operating Officer of Mandarin Restaurants, and I was Jenny. Ah! Oh my God. No way, you can't be serious. <laughs> oh my God. Am I in trouble? <laughs> Every new CEO has made difficult trade-offs, but the tricky part is to know where to begin. The same was the case for Lynn Zippone, who was just five months in Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen, the world's second largest fried chicken restaurant chain. So we got stuck in a situation, and you know who to call, by which we mean the undercover boss, just in case you missed it. I'm Lynn Zippone, the chief talent officer at Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen is a quick service restaurant. Louisiana. I'm in the restaurant so often, everybody knows. Me. Since I'm so new to the organization, I'm a perfect candidate to go undercover because, quite frankly, not that many people know. So, all dyed up and dressed up as Pam Hawkins, a shift supervisor at a fine dining restaurant taking part in a fictional reality show called Job Swap. The first recipient up close inspection was Aaron, who was a pretty sweet guy initially. He took the newbie in and instructed him with quite fun and patience. But when he got his hands on deck, another version of his split personality came out. The man acted like a total wacko and scolded his employees repeatedly in front of customers, which made Zappone almost break cover. I'm calling that out like this man all the damn near 100 pieces of chicken. The hardest part about going undercover is not to break cover when there's an opportunity to coach about something. I heard you five times that you need difference, like the man just did all the, all the chicken. Hold on. He's wearing that Popeye's logo. He represents the brand. Oh, busted. The guy is something. Well, only time will tell what the CEO will dish to him. Let's move to another employee of Popeyes named Gina, a 27-year veteran who was tasked with training Zepone. FYI, she did pretty well. But the moment that tingled us was when she told Zepone about a broken pipe in the bathroom that had never been fixed, and this was causing customer complaints. They also don't have any cleaning supplies besides spray and paper towels. And she also saved the boss lady from getting babbled at by the manager when she dropped fresh cups on the floor. However, both working moms connected after shifts like this. So is other parts of your family still live uh, here in this parish? No, all my family scattered all over everywhere. So how'd you get back to the company? Well, I, I had to get fired and come back. Such a heartwarming moment, isn't it? Let me take you to another one. Meet Josh, whose very support system in life is his crew from Popeyes. However, he told the boss lady about the lack of consideration from the bosses, as they were no longer entitled to employee discounts. He told Lynn how he was barely on his feet and that he had the basic necessities even after working hard shifts for the food chain. And that's why I'm really trying to work hard to get a car mm -hmm. so I can continue trying to go to school because I want to go to school for hospitality management. Mm -hmm. Issues at my household, mm -hmm. my sexual preference was a big problem too. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, Lynn definitely got an inside scoop with the help of CBS production, meeting all sorts of employees. And now it was time to go back to her real life and getting ready for the big reveal. But the question is, how her employees will take it? And will she be able to make the best of what she learned? Let's watch. You know who I am? Pam. Miss Pam. Miss Pam? My name is Lynn Zappone, mm -hmm. and I'm the Chief Talent Officer with Popeyes. Oh, <laughs> I'm just so shocked. <laughs> we want to give you $10,000 that you can use to buy a car, 